So this is attempt number four at the shoulder joint. You guys might have remembered uh, last time I was playing around with the cycloidal um, gearbox to get this thing to work. Um, it didn't work out too well. Um, the gears were all made of plastic. Uh, the shaft for the gearbox was made out of plastic. So uh, it just presented too many problems. I'm not a machinist, so I couldn't, uh, I wasn't able to make that uh, that thing right. It, the amount of force that it takes to move one of these shoulders is just too great for that to work out. So unfortunately that did not work. So I went back to my original uh, plan, which was to use uh, a servo. Um, the original reason I didn't use a servo is because I thought it was too big to fit in there, to fit in one of these. Um, but looking at the model, I played around with it a little bit. I imported an actual uh, 3D model of this, and I was able to make it work out. So the front part of the, the joint here, look on the back, I got it screwed in. Uh, the actual uh, servo horn is screwed in right there. And what, uh, how this works is this is the actual shoulder joint, right? So you can, it turns this way and then it, you know, it'll, um, it turns this way. So you move the arm up and down, right? That's currently how I have it. I want this thing to actually uh, rotate this way on this axis. So to do that, put the servo in, I got the grooves in here. It fits in like that. And, uh, and this will fit on there this way and it's hard to get it lined up but when you do it fits in that way like that so you can hear it moving works pretty well um i got the bottom part that comes together so it'll fit in like this let me put it in on camera here that is secured that way. And then under here is where the actual uh, arm connects inside of here. So it moves, it'll move the whole arm. So it's, it's 60 kilograms, I think it'll work. Um, I also have a back, the plate, which doesn't move. It's, um, it's made just to cover it. So it would fit on just like that, which is pretty nice. So yeah, that's the actual setup of it. Works good. I mean, you know, uh, you can see it a little bit. I don't think that's um, a deal breaker, especially if I can get this articulation out of it the way I want it. Um, so now we just gotta bench test it. Let's get to it. All right, so here it is all assembled. And I uh, got it wired up to an Arduino. So let's test it out. Plug this guy in. Should start to move here. Yeah, there it goes. So it's working the opposite way of how to pick it up. I feel like it's in the shoulder right now. So it's got that articulation from left to right. So it works well, um, and I'm making it just creep. It's only like 10% um, speed right now, uh, but it's working good. And I, you know, I originally wanted to do a servo. I just, I didn't think that I'd be able to fit a servo of <coughs> the size in there. But playing around with the 3D model, I was able to to make it work. Um, you can see it in here. So it fits in nice, I mean, a little bit sticks out, but you know, I can cover up the red with a little bit of black tape or whatever it might be, but it's not really that noticeable. But this kind of solves the problem now. So I'm gonna stick with my original setup and use uh, this bad boy here to, to raise, the, uh, raise the arm up and down. Um, that, that thing works, no problem. 380 uh, kilograms, that's more than enough, so. That's the update. He's shoulderless for now. I gotta do this side too, but I think it'll be a nice cool feature, you know, to be able to have the arm kind of move out a little bit.
he raises the gun, and then when you raise this arm up, you know, the gun will be like that, and then he can move it back and forth, which is kind of cool. So, that's the update, guys. Oh yeah, and go Niners.